we're going to talk about hidden feature of ink stitch and the reason it's hidden got to know up front it doesn't always work that's why it's hidden but you can get to the information by going to inkstitch.org clicking on fact faq frequently asked questions scrolling down quite a ways and you'll see under tips hidden features there's only one hidden feature that i know of and that is what they're calling color blending a really bad name for it. it should be just fill stitch gradient color blending only happens if you do a fill stitch gradient of two objects in the opposite direction i'll explain that shortly however this is what you basically get setting it to zero as a normal fill stitch and then as you increase the numbers it gets further and further apart the starting point will be the fill stitch of whatever you have set in params. The ending fill stitch will be whatever you have set in the gradient fill. The magic instruction for ink stitch is this right here. Embroider underscore and underscore row underscore spacing underscore mm. Rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? Would they not have done ink stitch underscore gradient? But eh, anyway, I'm going to right click and copy that. I'm also going to link this page right here in the description for the video because you may need that information again in order to copy this instruction right here that I just copied. Let's switch over to Inkscape. I'm going to set my size to 4x4. Four four. It says an inch. Okay, I'm going to just make something like so, really quick and easy. I'm going to turn that object to path, which if, technically it already was a path, but we're just going to make sure. And go into extensions, ink stitch params. I'm going to turn off under path and turn off underlay. Right now our stitching is going horizontally up. I'm going to change that to 90 degrees so it goes across like so. Outstanding. Hit apply. Now here's where the magic happens. With our rect 980 highlighted, we're going to hit edit and come down to XML editor. You'll notice that as soon as you open this up, our SVG path ID rect 980 is already highlighted and it has some instructions down here underneath it. That is instructions tied directly to that rect 980. We're going to hit the plus button so that we can add a new attribute. And I'm going to control V or right click and paste that command that we copied a few minutes ago, embroider and row spacing mm, and under attribute name uh, value, I'm going to hit three. That's it. We just made a gradient. And I'll show you an action with simulator. You want to turn off your underpath because your underpath kind of removes the reason that you even have a gradient happening. So you can see very light on the right, very dense on the left. Outstanding. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop this over here. I'm going to move it up a little bit because we're going to stitch this little four by four out shortly. But we're going to play around a little bit. So I've done that. I'm going to I'm going to duplicate that. Control D. Get my path layers i'm going to hit control so it comes over straight and then do it again and so it goes down straight so there's a little bit of an overlap and i'm going to hit a different color color doesn't matter we're just playing so now i want the light part of the gradient on the red one to be on the right and the light part of the whatever color that is purple to be on the left this took me Way longer than I want to admit to figure out how to swap these. I tried path reverse. I tried ink stitch command on 
start and fail start and fail stop. I tried just like everything I can, and it turned out to be really simple. So with this one in params, our angle line of stitches is 90 degrees. That puts our light stitching on the right. To put our light stitching on the left, you actually completely reverse that to the point of doing the same number with a minus. So we're gonna do minus 90. Now it's on the left. That's so easy. So easy a truck driver can do it. Outstanding. So let's have a look and see what the two together look like. Zoom this in or speed this up rather. All right, now to get rid of this line that's happening, which can be irritating and depending on the effect you're wanting, you don't want a line and you don't want the underpath coming underneath. Get rid of that line. You What it's doing by default, your artwork is starting on the left and ending on the left. So it has to start on the left, draw a line down, and then start doing your stuff back to get back to where we started. Kind of like when you're doing a satin stitch, you want it to, if you want it to start down here, but you need the satin part to start up here, you got to draw that little sketch line to get up there and then start satin stitching down. It's kind of doing the same thing. An easy way to fix that is with the start and stop command. Ink stitch, fill tools, nope. Sorry, commands, attach command, fill start, and fill ending position. Hit apply. We're going to scroll in so we can get a little closer to the action. I want this to start on the left, and I want this to end on the right. We're going to do that same thing again with this one. Extensions, ink stitch, commands, attach command, and apply. So as long as it doesn't matter, you can start it on either side. As long as you're ending on the exact opposite side, it won't have that little sketch to, sketch line. So let's see this in action. So the first one I said start on the left, end on the right. The next one I said start on the right and end on the left. I no longer have that little straight line thing going on so that's what we want I want my gradient stitching to be a, a little bit less extreme so I'm going to edit that I'm going to click that rect right there and one thing to notice the the uh, command that we pasted is no longer here now it's ink stitch colon end row spacing millimeter which is a little bit better, you know, that's a, that's a little easier to understand. I'm going to set that to two, and I'm going to do the same thing again with that one. Set that to two. And to play around a little bit more, we're going to do something similar again, except we're going to do it with a circle. We're going to do the circle here and set path. I don't know if this is necessary, but it makes me feel better. Object to path. And I need that. Okay. Go to uh, path. Go to params. And we're going to turn off the underlay, the underpath, and the underlay. And hit OK. And go into here. There's our path. That's our circle path. Add a thing. Paste, because that's what we know already. I'm going to do a two on that. Now, I want it to be, I want this to be a lighter gradient at the top. So I want it to stitch from bottom up, which is zero, right? I think that's what it is by default. So with just that highlighted, we're going to go into a visualize, see what it does. We're not getting it. Notice, remember, I said it's a hidden feature because it doesn't always work. Let's make sure we have everything set. Uh, 
Actually, it's not still there, so I didn't keep it, evidently. So let's try again. Two. It says it's still there. Let's jump into uh, params real quick. Uh, now it's working. Okay, cold beans. It probably didn't save it or something. But uh, it's it's doing light on the bottom, which is I'm going to do two circles, one light on the bottom, one light on top. So I could make this one the top sketch. And I think I will. So I'm going to move that to there. I'm going to do extensions, ink stitch, commands, attach command, start and stop position. And I want it. They are actually opp opposing. So it should have worked. And let's just do a quick preview. We're going to preview both of them evidently. That's fine. Okay. That's good. Yeah, we're good. Uh, we're going to make this a different color so that it doesn't jump stitch. Okay. So I'm just going to control D that and I'm going to pull it down and I'm just leave it there. We'll give it a slightly different color. Something like that. Now we want this one to switch and it is just really just is there such is there such a number as a zero negative or a negative zero if i do a negative a zero negative it doesn't work does it negative zero What is that extra thing there? I don't know. Yeah, it's not working. So let's go with some bigger numbers. Let's do a 10. Because we're trying to figure this out, right? Oh. Oh, okay. So maybe I need 90 would be straight up and down, right? 180? What is 180? There it is. So the opposite of zero is 180 as far as degrees go. I was never great in math. Just so you know. Let's go ink stitch. Rams. Let's put this back to zero. So our, 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 our look should be right now. Let's do the whole group. And I need to start and stop on that one. Other than that, we're good. I'm actually going to take this to the machine and stitch it out. Partly because I'm curious and partly because I want you to see the results. I want to see the results too. Ink stitch, commands, attach command, start and stop. Opposite ends, awesome. I'm going to make these a little bit bigger. All right. We'll do one more visual. Do a realistic view. Sweet. I'm going to stitch this out and see what it looks like. I'm going to ever so slightly move this one up. About like that. So let's save it. Save as. Uh, yeah, gradient. We'll go gradient SVG. I'll save as gradient dot dst trusty handy dandy usb stick to go from a linux box to an embroidery machine 
works like a charm. Get that opened up. Give that a copy. Give that a paste. We'll go to the underground bunker and we'll check it out. Follow me. I wanted to stop this embroidery re machine recording right here just because that that uh, that circle right there looks by itself before the next one starts looks like the beginnings of a pretty cool logo with the gradient dance on top light on bottom it looks like the beginning of some kind of a neat logo so, let's continue. So, that is the gradient video in a nutshell. Uh, a lot of great things can be accomplished with this gradient. Once you get the hang of it and get the idea how it works. I really like it. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching.